we, uh, you know, we stayed in this game and fought all the way to the end on the um, onside kick. I really feel for our players, um, you know, their fight and working, you know, play from trailing behind from 10-0 deficit from early on in the game and, and working to uh, find ways to get ourselves back in the game, make plays, getting ourselves back into a one possession game. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're, we're unable to pull it out tonight. Um, but it went all the way down to an onside kick at the end. And I love the players for their fight and what, the, what they're able to do. Uh, we needed to get off the field on third downs more. When you play an offense like this, it um, is capable of throwing the ball the way they are. Um, we didn't do a good enough job getting off the, the, the field in third down situations um, and, and ultimately applying pressure onto the quarterback. And so that's on us. We've got to make sure that um, we're dialed in those situations so that uh, we can be successful. Um, you know, we were moving the ball early on in the game, and uh, we had two turnovers. And um, we found a way still, though, as, as we're moving into the half there to, to put ourselves in position, especially getting the ball. And uh, ultimately, uh, we were chasing those seven points on the kickoff return that we gave up just before the half. And, you know, that's on us. We got we to gotta do a better job. I got to do a better job making sure that, you know, we get in those situations. And um, we fully understand when, you know, when we kick a, kick a uh, squib kick exactly where that ball needs to be because we got guys that are capable of putting the ball wherever we need them to, you know, on the field there. And uh, being able to get out of that half and then come out and uh, still the middle eight. Um, we didn't get that done, which that would have gave us a ton of momentum there. So um, for our team, you know, as we move forward, um, you know, we have the opportunity uh, to be one and know next week. And it's a 24 hour rule, just like it is when we win. Um, we got guys that care deeply. Um, I feel for the guys looking at them as they walk off the field and into the locker room. This team cares. Uh, you can see uh, uh, in terms of how they fought, you know, all the way to the end and uh, you know, it's guys went down in the game and there were guys that stepped up, moved positions and, you know, uh, gave us a shot again, ultimately to to have a chance to um, play for the win at the end. And uh, I love them for that. I'm proud of them for that. Um, we will find uh, we'll look at the film and we're going to find ways to, to, to be able to grow, especially as we go down the stretch here. Obviously not the outcome you wanted, but Jonah was a bright spot tonight. He set the program career record for field goals. I mean, you know, what has it been like? What does it say about him to, to go from a walk-on to now yeah. being the most productive kicker in Boise State history? Yeah, he's just exceptionally, exceptional young man, um, not only in his skill set and what he's able to do, but who he is as a person and uh, just proud of him. I mean, there's, there's, you know, it's not the outcome we want. We've obviously had some, uh, some tough losses this year, but there's a bunch of good great young men on this team that are doing unbelievable things and will continue to grow forward. Um, Jonah's just, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have Jonah part of this program and be a part of what he's been able to do, uh, you know, and all the success that he's had while he's been here. Yeah, he just hit that, the kickoff return right before half time. He touched on it. Squib kick was good. Was, was it just a coverage issue there? What, 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 what I mean, ultimately, when we squib like that, we don't want the ball going back to the returners. I mean, when you're going to squib in that situation, you don't want the ball in their hands. Um, for obvious reasons, and again, that's on us to make sure that we get that executed better next time. Um, you know, that's seven seconds on the clock there. You know, it's a deeper squib, but you want to make sure it goes to one of the up backs, not to one of the return guys. And then we've got to be able to cover. You know, we got to be able to cover the kick, especially being that it wasn't in the middle of the field. Um, we got to be able to get down in our coverage lanes to take leverage, read uh, um, how the front line is blocking, and we just we we had too much space right in the middle in between. Uh, um, each side of the kicker. What about, what about the play where uh, Austin got called for waving his arm? That obviously puts you guys in a tough spot back at the three-yard line. Was, was, they, was that the right they call? Said, was they said that uh, he simulated a fair catch signal and was not uh, the uh, ball. He was not the intended um, returner. So um, because of that, we're down wherever uh, the man that did not signal caught the ball. Maddox wasn't perfect tonight, but he showed the toughness he really always shows. I mean, what can you say about how he performed tonight? Yeah, I mean, ultimately down the stretch, he uh, he gives us the best option to be able to, uh, you know, lead an offense to play from behind, and and was pretty impressive on uh, how we we were moving the ball down the field, um, and and ultimately, you know, we spread the ball around to a bunch of different wide receivers tonight. Um, it was it was good to see. Like Chase had a huge catch down the stretch there. 
Um, it was awesome to see Austin Bolt have a, a catch. Um, we got to be able to build off of that, you know, just to be able to have that consistency and play with pace like that. And once we, you know, we're able to get the sticks moving, we got to be able to play with some pace like that, whether it's in the run game and the pass game, because we've seen um, that uh, um, throughout the course of the year, we scored, we've been able to score fairly quickly um, and move the ball down the field when we use those tempo mechanisms that we that we do have, and that's something that we we will build on as we move forward here. Forty two pass attempts for Maddox tonight compared to just two for Talon, and it seems like each game Maddox is getting more and more yeah. of the uh, more of the. Is he kind of overtaking Talon, or I mean, what's kind of what's he's kind of going on? you know he's he has definitely uh, been able to execute you know more in the passing game more efficiently. Um, it's led to our pass game numbers increasing, um, you know, and, and ultimately really gave us a shot to, to win tonight um, by how he performed. And uh, that's something that, I mean, again, we'll, we'll be able to evaluate as we move forward here. And what gives us the best shot to be 1-0 uh, next week is what we'll do. You had you know, 19 targets, I think, for, for Eric McAllister, and then the next guy had six. I mean, how much more do you need some other guys to, to get involved in the passing game? Yeah, and, and that's really comes down to spreading it around too. Again, we had, you know, Chase Penry came off, you know, being injured, and in his first game back, I mean, he had a, a huge catch just a second ago. Uh, um, being able to spread the ball around to different guys, uh, you know, uh, with uh, Steph going down, um, some other guys got to jump in there, and you know, a guy like Chase jumped in there and, and made some plays. And again, Austin, we got to get Austin going, you know, in the past game, and and. Uh, We've got other wide receivers, too, who are very capable. Um, but uh, again, we, we've got to get ourselves in that position where we can use that tempo and use the tempo pass game and, and get rolling. Uh, that's shown to be uh, really efficient for us this year in terms of being able to move the, the ball up and down the field. And ultimately, though, we've got to capitalize you know, in the red zone. We've got to do a better job in the red zone. Uh, shoot late there, um, we had a huge play from Mad Dog you know, with his run on a scramble. and. Um, you know, it was pretty impressive to see him do that. Early on, Keenan was really eating you guys up with the deep ball. Uh, mm -hmm. Late tonight, he hit five passes for 20 yards or more. This seems to be a, a weekly issue for you guys. You know, as you go back and look at the film, what's the common denominator? What's, what's yeah, the last week happened? we gave up one, right. you know. So this week, um, we well, that's something that we've been trying to work on and obviously eliminate. Um, but, uh, you know, Early on in the game, they hit a few of them in tempo situations that we've got to be able to put the defense in a in, in better calls to be able to handle those situations. Um, but ultimately, it's still do, it comes down to being able to apply pressure on the quarterback, and, and we've got to be able to get ourselves in certain calls that can do that. We've got to be able to win our one-on-ones up front and, um, and be able to play with leverage in terms of uh, where wide receivers are lined up and how we're executing our, our techniques and coverage on the outside. George, I'm off, George looked a little closer to what we normally see out of George in terms of his quickness tonight. What did you think of him? Yeah, he did. I mean, he looked different even than last week, right? Yeah. I mean, early on in the game, uh, there were some nice holes for him at times, and then a couple times, you know, he made the first guy miss, and, uh, you know, he's getting back there. Obviously, that do it doesn't happen overnight when you're on the shelf that long, uh, but. George is a warrior tonight, too, and not just running out of the backfield, but he had six catches, too. Um, six targets, six catches for 61 yards, you know, receiving, too. So um, he stepped up tonight. Uh, looking forward to seeing George continue to grow um, and, and get in there and, and in terms of just getting himself back and getting back to his normal self. But he definitely looked closer to it tonight. I mean, you know, you know, four and five at this point, three games to go. I mean, uh, I know crazy things can happen, but it obviously looks kind of tough in terms of the Mountain West here. How do you kind of look at where you guys are at with three games left? And, uh, we'll be one and zero next week. That's the that's the mentality. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys.
would do that. Yeah. 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 Questions for Matt? Obviously a, a tough one. Uh, you know, you just you know gave you guys a chance here with the onside kick at the end, but just overall to, to come out here and lose this and drop to four and five, I mean, what's the feeling like in the locker room right now? Yeah, it hurts. I mean, everyone cares so much. I mean, this is a team full of guys that love to play the game and love to play for each other. So that happening, super unfortunate. And Fresno's a good team, but we know we got to be better and all those things. But, it was, I mean, it's a tough one. It's hard to swallow for sure. Andy said that he feels like you gave them the best chance to win right now, or at least with, with the circumstances of tonight. What do you think you're doing to put yourself in that position, Maddox? I mean, it, when it just comes down to playing football, like, I mean, it's a tough situation right now. And just playing football, uh, that's what you got to do at this point. So. I think Bush said earlier this week that you're still, I don't know if it changed this last week, but as of last Monday, you're getting like 25% of the reps in practice. Is, is, that, is that pretty accurate? And then how, <laughs> to play, you know, 75% of the game, how, how tough is that? Yeah, I mean, that's not something I really like control or think about. I wouldn't know, honestly. It's I go practice every day and just do my part of practice. So I don't look into it too much. And it's something, like I said, it's a super tough situation. Not very many people do it. So... And I'm obviously at this point, we're a little used to it. So it's just getting better week by week and understand the flow of it for sure. It seems like every week you're getting more and more reps. Just kind of how are you kind of embracing that and just, you know, making the most of what you, you know, when you can do it? Yeah, it's like you just said, making the most of it. Every opportunity that you get, it's a blessing. So making the most of that blessing and uh, doing your 111 for the team to help them win. I think three weeks ago, Emac had five targets in a game and we're like, oh, man, he needs more than that. Tonight he had 19. Um, what do you think of his performance and um, do you need other playmakers to, to, to lean on at times too, I guess? Yeah, 100%. I mean, there's a lot of guys that caught the ball tonight, but obviously Eric's a Blitnikoff uh, on the watch list, so he's a playmaker. And so it's, like you said, a lot of targets to him. It's got to happen, and he'll make plays, and so that's a playmaker. What did you see on that last touchdown run? I mean, you, you utilized your legs there uh, kind of on that last drive a couple of times. Yeah, Bush is super uh, heavy on vertical run opportunities, and especially when – Obviously, they were playing super soft for the majority of the game, and we went into tempo, and those D linemen were gassed. And it was like first, second, third read weren't there. It's like you had to make a play, and luckily it was just right there. And the ref, I think, had a nice little pick. So, How, how special was it for Austin Bolt to get his uh, first career reception after you know, all, all the work he's done to get back? Yeah, no, Austin Bolt, I mean, it like kind of gave me the chills. Just barely. That guy's one of the hardest workers. And obviously, it's a super unfortunate injury, and then it just kind of – as he was getting back, something else happened. So it's awesome to have him back, and obviously he makes plays. So he's definitely going to – he's a playmaker. He loves his team, so he's going to do whatever he has to. What did you think of James Burgess Terrell's first career pass? <laughs> that was awesome. I mean, it kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting it, but him to come in there and convert, <laughs> we needed that, so it was awesome. How much do you guys work on that play, and how long are you guys going to wait in the car? I, I honestly don't really have any idea, if I'm going to be completely honest. What, what, uh, just with three games to go, I mean, it looks tough now for the Mountain West, obviously. I mean, you, how do you guys kind of rally here and kind of finish the season strong? Yeah, I mean, it's a, like I said, it's a team full of competitors, and we're not going to stop. We're going to do everything we can to just keep going. I know you guys won't use it as an excuse, but, you know, going into halftime with that gut punch, just, you know, how, how tough was that to kind of respond to? Yeah, I mean, we knew it was going to be a whole, like, heavyweight fight. That's what we kind of said it was going to be, and that happened. It's like you said, a gut punch, but nobody was really phased. We came out of halftime, and I think we had a good second half. So, Max, what's your, uh, what's your pre preparation process like? Like, how, why coaches continue to compliment what you're kind of doing in between game days? So what do you emphasize, and, and yeah, what's, what's your process kind of like? Like, I mean, you key to the edge, I guess. Yeah, I mean, early on, it's like the opponent, right? You get to the opponent, but – by Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, it's what we got in, the game plan. And I think it's just time. That's This, this game's time-consuming. and All those coaches work extremely hard. I mean, nobody really knows how hard those guys work when they're in and out of the office. I mean, they're out of the office extremely late, in the office extremely early. So it's just, I mean, getting with those guys helps a lot. I mean, Bush is super helpful when it comes to preparation. How much time, like, beyond what's required of you, do you feel like you put in? I mean, I, I, I don't really know. It's just... I mean, kind of just confidence is where I get to. It's like if I'm confident, that's where I know I'm prepared. Brad, how do you think you played tonight, personally? I mean, you obviously put up some stats or a couple, you know, throws that they, they didn't pick that maybe they could have, and you obviously, you know, played pretty well, too. I mean, how do you evaluate your game? I mean, 
at the end of the day, it's not really like as an offense, we played extremely awesome. I think we had around 180 rushing yards, something like that. So <laughs> the rushing part was a big time of the game. The like the pass game was got there late. So I mean, it's all all those guys around me that are helping me for sure. Anybody else? Yeah, last one. Last one. Cool. Um, quarterback position is such a leadership position, right? And when you have when you have two, I don't know if they're you know you get confused with who to turn to at times. How how do you approach this? You know when you're taking significantly more reps right now, Maddox. So how do you kind of approach that leadership position? I mean, yeah, like you said, it comes with the position. As a quarterback, you have to be a leader. And I think Talon still does an extremely great job of just being involved and helping those guys. I mean, you've seen Talon. He's super energetic all the time. And so I know me and him work together to get the best out of this team, and we will for sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <coughs>
of this game of football. You know, we can't, we never let any outside circumstances um, really choose whether we come in and play or play hard or do what we want to do. So next three games, we're going to attack them head on. You know, we're, we're proud to play for our city, proud to play for our school. So we want to come in next week. we got a home game, and it's the biggest game for us going forward because it's the next one. So. They, uh, they score on that long kickoff return there at the end of the first half. You know, that, that had to be a bit of a gut punch going into the locker room. What, what, what was the atmosphere in the locker room like at halftime? Um, I mean, we brought the guys up. We were like, no matter what, um, we knew it was going to be a tough game, but we knew coming in that we were going to have a plan coming out of uh, halftime and going to second half, so we didn't let that waver us at all. Um, the leaders kind of brought the guys up and let everybody know that we weren't going to let that one phase us. And yeah. Andy said that uh, you guys needed to do a better job getting off the field on third down tonight. Uh, how do you guys do that? What does it take to do that? Uh, third down, I mean, it's a critical down. You know, we got to get to the quarterback more. Uh, we got to, you know, just cover better. We got to do everything, everything better than just get off the field on third downs. You know, they had some, some good plays on third down. So did we. But, you know, it just comes down to the little things and doing the little things better to get off on third downs. After last week, your best defensive performance of the year, just what, what kind of a disappointment is it just to kind of have a, a week like this? I mean. Just in terms of, you know, like, like Ron was saying, the third downs. And I think it was like 200 or something passing yards. I mean, it's disappointing, but any whether whether we lose a game, it's always disappointing, no matter how how we lose, who plays well, or who doesn't. Like, if we lose a game, it's a disappointing thing for me and for the city and the school. So, I don't know how many times you've talked to now, but it seemed more recently your, your production gone up. What have you kind of learned as you step into a leadership role over these last few weeks? Yeah, just being consistent, just being a leader. You know, um, leaning on the older guys. You know, uh, bringing up the younger guys too that that come along and. Um, just playing hard, you know, every snap, uh, taking it day by day and really attacking every single day that I have because, you know, they never promise. How do you think the defense played? I mean, that, you guys, you know, gave up some yards, but I mean, you guys gave you guys a chance to, to win the game too. I mean, how do you look at how you guys played? I mean, we did some good things, but to our standard, like if they score one point, it wasn't a good game for us. So we just have to do a lot better there and stopping them from scoring. And I mean, we did some good things, but at the end of the day, it wasn't enough to get the win. And if, if we needed seven points, why didn't the defense go out there and get those seven? Or, you know, why didn't I, you know, do something better to make a play so we can put some points on the board? So no matter what, you know, if we, we lose the game, it doesn't really matter. Without Marco, you were a little thin. I don't know what percentage health-wise DJ is at, but um, how, how much is he fighting for, your, you know, you guys right now, I guess? No, he's fighting. I mean, we're all fighting. You know, it's like week 10, so everybody has, you know, things that, they're kind of having to overcome, but we pride ourselves in not letting any like outside influences affect us in the game. And if our pads are on and helmets aren't ready to go, then um, it's time to play. So he's done a good job at doing that, uh, leading the guys around him and uh, understanding that if we see him fighting uh, when he's hurt or not, like that, that brings the whole team together to want to do the same. So. I mean, Brandon, you guys put a ton of time into this. I mean, not feel the you know the the, the thrill of victory. Um, how, how hard is it to kind of get over the, the agony of defeat? And I mean, it's, it's never fun losing at all. We know that. We know we're a lot better than our record shows. And for the state of Boise and the team of Boise, we know that this is not the standard here. You know, just five losses is never the standard here for this team, any team I've played on. So it's just, you know, we got to just do better there and try and just move on to the next one. Anything else? All right, thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, guys.